Here we are. Again, same thing. You're just sewing. You've got your little squares. You're sewing them on two sides of this bright yellow print. And you've got those all finished like that. And then um, we do have to finish out these prints. I mean, these little units. Right yeah, yeah, because they've got some. Um... So this is a finished unit. And really, you sew one side on like this. Uh huh. Gonna press. And then this on that. Do we have to watch which side we sew them on? Can we just turn? We can just turn them, can't we? Make, do we make them all the same? Uh, uh, let's see. Yep. You can just make them all the same. And then just twist them to fit onto the corners, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they should. Yeah. So, so you, can, sometimes you can do a lot of chain piecing on yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. Because with like the stalks, you have to remember that they have a right side and a left side on those. Whereas when you're doing those, they're all cut the same, but I'm cut and made these, the same. Actually, you do have to do a mirror image. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yes. Right. So these two are going to be the same. Those two are going to be the same. And then you can chain piece one side and one side. So yes, that, that is a good point that you have to be mindful that there is that mirror image. Of course. And then you just do one row at a time. So you sew this on. Once Brilliant. you've got, yeah, you do your center section. Yeah. This, you're gonna sew it on, right sides together. So you've got this, and then easy enough, um, this sew on. So uh, when I'm piecing, I, I assume all your listeners know this, I always uh, nest my seams. Uh -huh. I tend, like I mentioned, never to open my seams. So I always nest my seams. And you see you have this intersection right here. Do, do, does the, do the instructions tell us which way to press them, or do we just need they to work that? They do not. That? They don't. Okay, so we just need no. to work out how to do that. No, it does not. So, uh, yeah, you can, as you're going along, I think I just pressed my seams in on this, and then on this snowball, I pressed I out. suppose if you've got, if you've got three, three rows, you know to do the top one, the bottom one going mm -hmm. one way, the middle one going the other way, and then stitch them together. Yes. So we make, how many do you say? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen mm. tulips. Thirteen, and then twelve of the Twelve of the, the blossoms, blossoms, right? And then, is there sashing between them, or do we just literally sew the blocks together? Uh, there, you sew the blocks together. And yes, because the sashing is on the tulip there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and we just do, you do an outside border, sa well, it's not really sashing, but no, outside border. border. Yeah. But yeah. So and it works then, out, you just, I think she has you uh, sew them in columns. Oh, okay. And then it's good to go. Then you make your quilt sandwich. Yes, yes, she does them in, she does not show so that there. She has yeah. got, just put them in columns like that. Oh, hang on, upstairs camera's going crazy. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Once, once you get them, there's no sashing in between. And yeah, you've got a, a beautiful floral uh, center. And I love that they're all a little different. So they're just a little bit of fussy going on, but it just makes a brilliant pop of color. So there's no two the same? No. Nope. Mm -mm. No. They're all a little, a little different. This is the one that we worked on. Well, that's the joy of having the 10 inch sacker, isn't it? Because you've got yeah. all the 42 different fabrics. So you can tell. do whatever combination you want, but we've kind of done the work for you to kind of showing you how we would do it. Yeah, but, of course. But that's what's fun about it. You can make it your own and you no know, two are the same. So you're not going to be bored making this. No, exactly. No, exactly. And again, because like we were saying, if you've got the time, you can just do one block a day or one block whenever you've got I mean you can sit down and do the whole thing if you wanted to but if you just want to do a little bit of sewing they're all independent of each other until you sew them together so just do all your cutting bag it all up and everything and be ready just go home and just sew up a flower and then you'll feel better because the colors because 
colours are very, very important, isn't it, to, yes. our, to our mental state and everything. And also you'll feel better because you made a cute little flower that looks beautiful. And I just think also you've then got the pattern. So if you then want to make in the future like cushions to go with or something for a present or that tulip will make a nice big card, wouldn't it? Or a little picture to put on the wall or something. Just be gorgeous. 99, uh, no, oh, hang on, that, that the, the graphic, yeah, the graphics are in for this one here because that one sold, that one sold out. Uh, so that's brilliant, right? Now let's just go back to this one very quickly then because uh, I just need to talk to you about this one. Um, we have got some, Riley, some brand new Riley Blake fabrics coming up in Cindy's second hour as well. So let me just move that one out of the way. And sold. Right, again, it comes in a beautiful, beautiful, look at the price, right? $99.99, split pair $49.99. Um, how many people have got in their baskets? This, Because uh, a lot of people... Right, there are 18 people got this in their baskets. We've got to, we've only got a few minutes of the hour left, so I just want to do this. I'll go through other tools that you can use to do foundation paper piecing and things like that. Um, so, you get in the box, you get the beautiful white fabric for the background of the center and for all of the hearts in the other squares. You get your instructions. You also get, this is what's important because it's foundation paper piecing. You also get all of your templates there. Now, do not use these, photocopy them either onto Carol Dirk paper or onto a very, very fine um, photocopy paper. Um, but make sure when you print it up that that square is exactly an inch. You don't want it to be any less or any more because it won't work. The reason you've got three different versions is because each one has a different shape above it and uh, above it. So you've got one with a, the big corner and then you've got the two other ones either side of it there. Uh, and then you also get the uh, template for the circle in the middle, which is also foundation paper pieced, but it just helps because you've got all the lines there, haven't you, to, to, to guide you and everything like that. And then you get the instructions of how to put it together. Um, so the fabric shown example, oh, it's called Dream, the, uh, the range of fabric, is it? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful instructions there. Lovely instructions, very simple instructions. And also, like I say, you could go to the Riley Blake website and, or the YouTube channel. You just go to the website, go to the YouTube channel, you can watch all different um, lessons in foundation paper piecing. And then look at this gorgeous fabric. These are just beautiful. By Australian designer, this one, isn't it? Christy yes, Lee. Yes, Christy Lee. And she also has her own um, tutorials, so you can look her up online on her Instagram page and, and follow her along, and she gives a lot of tips of what's helpful to her um, when she does foundation paper piecing. Brilliant. Let's just get all these and out. And thank you to everyone who follows Riley Blake Designs on Instagram. We just re reached 200,000 followers. Wow. So it was a big deal for us this week. Oh, message coming in. Fab to see Cindy this morning, which is lovely. <laughs> the nautical cascata fabric is one of my all-time favorite oh, Riley Blake designs. That's a few years White. ago. Yeah, that's, that's a uh, <laughs> Kate from Merseyside, that. Kate from Merseyside. I, right. I made a dress out of that octopus print. Oh, did you? Yes, I did. It was beautiful. So is there a picture I, of it on Instagram? <laughs> yeah, it's on Instagram. You're going to have to scroll yeah. a ways back. <laughs> yeah, because you're quite... Um, <laughs> Uh, you use your social media a lot, don't you, as a yes, company, right? Yes. Like, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then all this gorgeous fabric look. So it's $99.99, $49.99 on two split pairs there. Don't be frightened. Do not be frightened of foundation paper piecing. But the other thing I'd say is if you are frightened about foundation paper piecing, buy this because you, uh, you get all of this fabric to create that. You could use it for all sorts of things. All sorts of things, beautiful. And then you got all your little, so why do I need to get the five inch squares as well? Oh, that's a different fabric, that's why. Why do I need these five inch squares? Where do they go? They're just extra fabrics for the- They're um, specific for that center. For this so, one here? Yeah. Oh, I see, I see. And then these are the backgrounds yes. of all of those. Got it now, mm -hmm. got it now, beautiful. Right, some other tools that you might need for foundation paper piecing, which we might have mentioned are the Carol Dweck Foundation Paper Piecing Paper. Now this will be, you can print on this from uh, your uh, computer or you can photocopy onto it, your printer or your photocopier. 14.99 for 100 sheets. Because how many times are we gonna have to, there's a lot of times we're gonna be printing that up, isn't it? Oh, it's four. yeah, it's, I think there's, for each one, it's probably 36, is that right? I don't know if the math, 36 per, um, 
per, per block. Per block. So, but uh, two of the blocks come on one paper. So yes, A and yeah. B comes on one paper. You're oh, gonna, of course. You're yes, going to print yes, yes. that 36 yeah. times, and then the C block and the D block. 36 oh, on their own. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's right. You, you could use it. Use this. Use this paper. And this is really wet. Right. When you put, when you don't pull your paper away till the very last minute, then. Right. Right. Have you got any tips about how you pull your papers out? Uh, no. I just it it's usually pretty easy because you've got it's like a serrated edge almost because uh -huh. you've got the you've increased or decreased your stitch length. And it's usually, I just Well, that, that, that's the joy about this yeah. paper, is it this one, even yeah. though it's sturdy when you're sewing it, when you come to pull it out, that the, the um, perforations create like a stamp, you know. Yeah, And exactly. you can just pull it out. All we do say is though, don't pull it from miles away, because you want to stretch your seam, do you? Pull it where the stitches are. So that's the paper. Then we had the um, square. This one looks a bit bigger than the square you had. Yeah. No, six inch, it was six inch square. Okay, either That's way, you, just use need, either. you can use either. If, it, if it's a little bit larger, you just really need that fourth inch. You need the quarter inch seam length, yeah. but we've also got add a quarter inch rulers coming up in a second as well. That's the eight and a half inch square there, 16.99. Right now, when you fold the fabric back and you want to cut off to your quarter inch, we have this set of rulers. Uh, you can buy both, right? And you save a bit of money if you buy both. The, 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 six inch and 12 inch there what's so special about these is you want to get that quarter inch nice and neat i think so you butt this little there's a little um stand at the end there you literally butt that up against your seam and then cut along there and that will give you your exact quarter an inch seam allowance on there keeps it very neat and keeps it from getting too bulky so that's a set of all both the 12 and the six maybe you only want the 12 maybe Maybe only not the oh no we haven't got the twelve on its own got the six on its own got the six on its own. If you just want to do you don't need anything more than that for this one would you? You don't need the little six inch one for this yeah. one. Twelve ninety nine. It would be nice to have both. Yeah. Oh no, go always go both because you save money. <laughs> and then also the glue pen that we were just talking about here, the sew line fabric glue pen. You get the glue inside the pen and you get one refill. Yeah, those are excellent. Five I love and it's don't just go to your stationery shop and buy one of the glue sticks there because that hasn't been developed for fabric. This has been developed for fabric. Um, it dries clear. It doesn't clag up your sewing needle if you sew over it. And um, if you if it, if it gets a bit kind of uh, dry, you can just run the iron over the fabric and it just softens the glue up a little bit. And then just some quilting pins we've got here, and then we'll be going for a break. If you've got the heart, well, I'll do that in a minute. 10.99, 10.99 for 100 clover flower head pins. Now, the, the quilt over there sold out completely. This one here, so many people got it in their baskets. I know you're thinking, oh, shall I, shan't I, foundation paper piecing? Give it, get a go. The fabrics are so joyous, you're gonna love them anyway. 99 pounds and 99 pence, or you can have two split pay of 49.99. One split pay will drop down in a second. There it is. Uh, remember you pay no interest on split pay whatsoever and we send it to you after you've made your first payment so you'll have that by the end of next week right cindy thank you it's so okay. lovely to see you go thank and have you. a cup of tea and a sit down uh, in an hour's time now what's that fabric uh, we've got this beautiful beautiful new fabric little portraits on we have to come back in now i'll tell you more about it then but don't go anywhere joe carter's up next we're doing the red panda brand new soft toy uh so don't go anywhere we'll see you in four Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Sewing Streets have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and 
pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals. And message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7 full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PNP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Sewing Streets have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account, and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals, and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. 
Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. Full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP, even if you check out multiple times in one day. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Meet Roddy. Oh no, isn't he gorgeous? The red panda, red panda. Now there's been so much um, interest on social media about Roddy. Isn't he lovely? Roddy the Red Panda, and of course he can only be made by one, Joe Cotta, who is a, what does it say on that email? Cuddly toy expert. <laughs> she's yeah. cuddly and she's a toy expert. <laughs> uh, anyway, where does the name, first of all, hello. Hello, hello. Oh, sorry, oh, hello, am I on? Hello, hello. 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 Uh, where does the name, Rod who's chosen the name Roddy on this one then? Oh, we had a big to do about the name. Oh, no. Um, because there were already characters with the names we kept, because my son, was determined it was called Richie. Right. But there's a, a cartoon character called Richie Red Panda. So, oh, we, so? we've been through Rusty and Rocky and um, I said, I really like Roddy. And he said, oh, do what you want. Oh, and how old is he? <laughs> 11. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's gorgeous, isn't he? 29.99. I'll go through the box in a second. Now you boys are growing up, aren't they? They're both in high school from September. That's frightening, isn't it? Because when we, when we first met them, the little one couldn't see over yeah, it, did he? eyes at desk Aww. level. Yeah. Is he excited about going to the big school? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not really. But no. he'll be fine once he of gets... Of course he will. We'll get him a nice, you know, rucksack. <laughs> You'll make him a nice rucksack, you mean? Um, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, let me take you through what's in the kit for Roddy. Uh, everything is in this box apart from your toy stuffing. So the toy stuffing will get out for you in a second, yeah? Right, so, oh, don't worry about that, John. In your box, oh no, no, before I open the box, you've got an admission to make, haven't you? It's not a, like a guilty sort of secret. Um, red pandas, the real proper the red real pandas ones, yeah. have um, darker sort of dark brown, black legs. 
All and four of them? Yes. Right. And sometimes like a darker tummy as well. Right. And I did that on the original sample and it just looked too busy. Right. And so I, I took the design choice to stylize it and give it the... Well, I'm sure rusty. some have been born looking like this. There must be yeah. one or two. Yes. <laughs> so if you're sitting home going, oh, that's not... Uh, anatomically correct is that the right word anatomically correct but anyway but look the tail is do they really have stripy tails yes yeah look oh hang on we've got an issue there oh there he is there he is oh yeah see what you mean uh, to me that looks like he's just been wading in some water it looks like shadow maybe doesn't yeah, it yeah it's shadow no. it's a big blooming <laughs> shadow but look at the tail look at the gorgeous tail right now i can go through the box now i'll go through the box Right, so in the box, yours will arrive like this, right? All beautifully packaged like this. They come direct from Jo. She takes them to the post office. She does everything, right? So uh, there'll be no issues. There'll be no issues, right? So open the box. Inside the box, you get the instructions. Now, Jo's instructions are... Oh, sorry. Sorry, about this. Are so thorough, I can't tell you, right? So in here, you'll get all of your cutting instructions. But look! Photos, drawings, writings, arrows, everything you need to know, every single stage that you need to know, plus all of your um, pattern pieces. Now remember the arrow is the uh, grain of your fabric. Look, all the pieces you need, all the colours they need to be cut out of. Oh, they're little pants. Did you make pants with these? <laughs> What bit's that then? That's his stomach. His tummy. Aww. Right, so all the... And then even... Um, what's that for at the back? The tail stripe on the back there. Cutting guide fabric B, cutting guide fabric C. There's everything. If you get stuck, Jo doesn't mind if you contact her. Um, where was the best place for them to get hold of you? Um, probably email or Facebook. Okay, or so like, Facebook you're called. Don't um, do it to the Joanna Carter one because that's your family one, isn't it? It is. Um, jo at 2 Hours Design. I think that's I your email. Yep. Joe at two owls design. Remember that's two O's together. Two owls design. T W O O W L S. Couldn't make it more difficult. .co.uk. .co.uk. Uh, and then your Facebook is Joe Carter Two Owls Design. Yes. Because it yes. took me a while to tag you this because I couldn't <laughs> find it. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So that's the instructions. And in the box, you get your eyes. Now, we do say if you're giving it to an under three year old to boo felt eyes or stitched eyes, don't yep. we? Don't, don't say to put those in. Then you get your black for your nose. You get your white for your snout, because that's smooth white, that one. That's for his snout there. You get fluffy white for the side of his face and the inside of his ears. You get this beautiful, what's this called? That's marble. Lux Cuddle Marble. Lux Cuddle Marble. That's for his face and his tail. Oh, look at this, look at this. I have to do this with two hands. How beautiful is this? This is your main fabric. Now, a lot of people will be frightened because it's faux fur. They'll think, oh, it's stretchy, it won't cut properly. Actually, it's a good one to work with, isn't it? It is. It's not really stretchy and it's easy to mark out on the reverse because it's got a really nice woven back. Let me show you. And actually, there's a lot of fabric in this kit as well. What, you've got some left over then? Um, no, as in, it's really good value for money. This oh, oh, oh I see you mean, yes, you get a lot it. of fabric for the account of, amount of money, I see. Um, then, remember, you also get, with all of Joe's uh, premium designs, is that it? Premium? Yep. Yeah, premium, premium designs. Look, the little badge. The little badge goes with, oh, there you go, there's the website, you see, so it's easy to, you won't have to uh, be able to get a hold of her. Beautiful, isn't it? Now, when you get your parcel, this box will be inside an envelope, yep. and this will be in the envelope, not in the box. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. So this, don't just throw the envelope away. This will be in the bottom of the envelope, and the box being separately. What Joe doesn't want you to do is dive into the box, and it's not that it's sharp, but just health and safety reasons, we just do that. Okay, message on the bottom. Joe is so helpful, she's wonderful. Done the dog and the monkey. The fabric is so soft, and they're good to make. Love them from Karen in Bridlington. Hello, Thanks, Karen, Karen in Bridlington. Uh, thank you very much for that message. Right, so twenty nine ninety nine. You see, I'm surprised these are still twenty nine ninety nine. And not not because of you, but because just of everything that's going on in the world. Yeah. My even my Tesco's bill. I buy the same thing everywhere. I'm very boring. The woman at the counter must know. Oh, here comes this tomatoes. Easy. But you know <laughs> what I mean? It's like even that. And I'm not just blaming Tesco. All supermarkets the same. Everything's going up. These have been the same price ever since I've known you. 
I think. You know what I mean? Twenty nine ninety nine for what yeah. you're getting is an amazing. And I'm not just saying that because I'm here on Selly Telly. It is. And if you think not only of the fabric that Joe's bought for it, because she only uses top top quality fabric. She sat in her studio shed, uh, <laughs> cutting all of these, and she doesn't let the husband do it. Nobody else is allowed to do it. The kids aren't, well, they wouldn't do it, would they? So you no. do everything, don't you? So I just want you to know how much love goes into one, well, first of all, the design, but also into packing the yep. boxes. I pack every single kit, put every sticker on the box. Actually, shout out to my husband. He often folds the tissue paper. What, that? He'll fold the tissue in half. Yeah, but look, it's not me. even in the right place in his box. <laughs> Uh, so there's yeah, tissue paper. Is that what that old he's been reduced to? And he sweeps up afterwards. Uh, well, he just saw a lot of the logistics. Like he went and collected the labels yesterday because he hadn't arrived. In oh, things. yesterday! Yes. Oh my goodness! No. Right. So there you go. Everything in there to make. I'll do the toy stuffing in a minute. Let's get on with the making now. Are we saying beginner, intermediate, or advanced for this one? I would say this one was an intermediate only because. Um, it's the handling of the fabric, but it's it's a little bit fussier with the eye patches and the stripy tail and things. Okay, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so if, if someone's made a Joe Carter toy before, they'll be able to do this one. They but will. if you've never made one before, maybe start with Otto and then work up to this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Right. Okay. Let's. Where should we start then? Okay. The leg, arm, ears, and tail are made following the same sort of technique. Um, so if I was to sew two cut out leg pieces together it'd just be difficult getting around this curve and stopping things from slipping out of place so the easiest way to do this is to cut and for both the arms and the legs cut out four rectangles from the fabric and I would recommend doing this first right um, just so it's easier to fit the smaller pieces around them you don't want to cut out or mark out all the smaller pieces and then realize you can't get the like four rectangle, yeah. rectangles and same with the tail stripe as well so cut out four of these and then I say in the instructions, stroke the fabric to find out which way the pile is running. And sometimes it's really obvious it's running that way because if I brush it that way, it sticks up. Yeah. But with this textured hide fabric, it doesn't really make a huge amount of difference to okay. be honest. So I, I say check the pile direction, but if you don't. But then you'd want them all to go in the same, would you want them all to go in the same direction? Is that not matter? It sort of swirls, so oh, I, don't, okay, I don't think you'd really yeah, notice. Right, okay, fine. So, Cut out those four rectangles and yeah. then fold them over um, so the pile is running that way. So I'd flip it that way so it's facing me. Fold it over and then hand stitch the long edge together just right. to hold them in place. Right. Um, you could do this bit with a walking foot, but in case you don't, I, I mean, I don't never put my walking foot on. I just do it like this. Yeah. And then these templates for the ear, the arm, the tail and the leg don't have the seam allowance around the side so center them on the folded fabric and then draw around the template but then sew directly on the line on the line but with the leg to make fitting the legs easier because they look like they were going pre-stuffed um but to make it easier to sew it all together i'm not going to stuff the legs when they go in i'm going to leave a little gap in the side oh, okay for the legs i did try yeah you know, and what, in one of the early samples, I thought, no, this is not happening. I did text her earlier this week going, can you send me a picture of, of the new toy, please? She was like, I'm just having to remake him. Was that because it was a different colour or something, have not it? I had to go for a slightly different fabric because there wasn't the fabric I originally made it in stock. So it's just a slight, it's a slight shade difference and texture. Oh, OK. So I don't, I'm not sure it's particularly noticeable, but... Uh, no, OK. And what, oh, there is, so there is similar to the top of the... The seam allowance leg, at the top. But not all round the sides. So for the leg, and just keep it nice and flat, a flat hand on top as you sew. Yeah. But with the leg, sew up to the notch, and then reverse a few stitches, and then stop, and then leave that gap, and then start oh, yes, again for the stuffing, at yeah. the other notch. Oh, the notch is there to follow, brilliant. Yeah, just so you've got an idea of where yeah. to leave that gap. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect, because it is just an opening to yeah. stuff it later. And pivot as you're going around the curved bits if you have to. Yeah, because it will stretch it a little bit if you yeah. try and go all the way around. So I'm just keeping it nice and flat with a splayed hand. Yeah. 
I know lots of people on Facebook are saying they need to get this one lady was saying she's got to make it for her son he's going to university and it's her favourite and his favourite animal Derek was going to have to get one for, I can't remember what Derek's reason was but Derek wanted one as well Red Panda is my son's favourite animal is it? he has a Red Panda t-shirt and he grew out of the original, so we had to rebuy it in the next size. No. Up. And he loves red pandas. Isn't it weird? Because uh, until I watched uh, Secret Life of the Zoo at Chester Zoo, I didn't even know they existed. I'm not sure how he discovered them. Um, it might have been Chester Zoo because we used to go quite a lot. Oh, OK. So once we've done that, um, cut out to leave a seam allowance around, i say six millimetres, quarter an inch. Actually, I do it a bit more generous than OK. Here. We want to leave the seam allowance next to the gap as well. Yes. But the seam allowance is included at the top, so you can cut straight across the line of at course. the top. Now, um, there doesn't seem to be that much. I mean, I know that, oh, as I said, that there doesn't seem much fluff, but is, how fluffy is your machine? Throw it on the floor. How's your machine going to be afterwards? Um, quite fluffy. OK, fine. And I find this part of my body here okay. also <laughs> quite fluffy. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see now you've cut it, yeah. <laughs> So I'll turn that the right way out. So if I give it a bit of a shake, you'll see it is quite a fluffy fabric, but it's so soft. It's, yeah, it's really beautiful. nice. And so, so easy then, didn't it? Because it, back in the day, when you used to buy faux furs and everything, they were the most, and also when you used to buy faux fur, when I worked in theater, you'd always have to cut it from the back because of the pile. So when you're cutting these out, you cut from the back to so which side you cut from. Yeah, I cut from the back and I tend to, position the scissors so it's just cutting through the sort of woven back. Oh, so it's the same, so same in between sort of thing. the yeah. fibres. Yeah. It doesn't, if the fibres are over the length of the seam allowance, you might see sort of blunt cuts in the fur on the finished oh, thing. Yeah. So snippy scissors and sort of in between the fibres if you can when you're cutting it yeah, out. Yeah, brilliant. Um, but it, it's, it has some stretch, but not a huge Are you using a normal needle? Yes. I, yeah. Um, I'm a bit of a sloppy sewer, so it's, a ballpoint is ideal. Oh, is that okay? <laughs> yeah. That's fine. But I regularly. But you're just, saying it with a normal needle yeah, now. Yeah, kind of do it at home. And that'll be a blunt one as well. And the it? one at home will be blunt yeah. as yeah, well. Okay, so. fine. <laughs> Glad to know. <laughs> well, I'll be honest. I know I do sometimes. I do quilting. I change my needle. Yeah. Um, but for toys, I tend to use any old needle. Yeah. If I'm honest. And have you made many quilts recently? Um, no. no. I've not done any sort of sewing that isn't toy related so I'll just do the arm as well but the arm straight round no gap in this one uh -huh. although if you wanted to it would make it easier with a gap in um, and it wasn't and it didn't go in pre-stuffed so this one you stuff it you stuff the arm before or after you say you stuff the arm once it's on you just stuff the arm stuff the arm before it's basic, sewing it, yeah, yeah. Bef yeah before sewing it on And I'm done as well and the tail is done in the same end way but I'll do, show you how to put the stripes together and okay. the the ear because it has a different front and back white yep. on the front brown on the back you can't do the fold it has to be two pieces so I just tack them together the, the pieces bottom, together yeah. top and bottom and then do the ear brilliant like so I think I've probably got a spare arm so I'll leave that for the tail cut two stripes A brown one and an orange one. Right. And then sew them together um, with the brown one on top. It doesn't make a big difference if the stripes go in a different way. Right. So I've sewn these two together and then I'm just going to fold it in half to find the centre. And just cut these in half. And then sew them together like oh, that. Oh, I see. It's just slightly faster. Yeah. So I'll sew these together. Third of the sock has gone already almost, once you've all checked out. Oh, there you go. Katie, yes, my son is off to university. He loves Chester Zoo, Red Panda. So Roddy will be right, will be in his dorm room buddy. Oh. Yeah, all the A-level results came out yesterday, didn't they? I'm not looking for it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm already got, dreading that. Hang on, how old are your children? How old are your, he's not old enough to do his A-level shit, is he oldest? No, but he does his GCSEs next year. No. Yeah. He's, 
he's fine, but not even slightly bothered. No, yeah, no, it's fine. Mom. But um, so is, when is he naturally bright then? Will he be all right? He's quite academic. Yeah. Oh, good. That's um, right, then. And like me, so I think it'll be on our O levels. I was absolutely fine. I sailed through my O levels, so I thought I'd sail through my A levels. Just sort of, no, they're different, aren't they? I'm sure he won't mind me saying this because we were laughing about it. He got his mock paper back for one of his exams. He said there were five pages. I just didn't do. I said, why? Don't I didn't see them. Oh no! <laughs> so he was sitting in his exam for ages, thinking, you know, what's taking everybody else so much time? And did he still pass it? He did. Oh blimey! If you missed five pages and still pass, you might be all right. So. Um, but it's a valuable lesson to learn in your mock because you don't yes. want to do it in your actual. No, exactly. Exams. But they're just the thought of him sitting there, you know, watching, watching the also. clock. <laughs> <laughs> Can they not leave early now? We used to be able to, if you thought you'd finished in my day, you could just get up and leave. I don't know, maybe they can. I think we could as well, actually. So once they're joined in four stripes, fold yeah. it over, um, baste the long side together with long stitches to hold the fold in position. Right. And then this is oh, the tail. Oh, I see. So you, you make the fabric to then cut that that's not the yeah. tail you that you draw your tube but then you actually cut your shape of your fabric out from that yeah, yeah. i found this just to be the easiest way yeah. of yeah. doing it so with this one you want to place the fold on the on the, the fold yeah the fold on the fold that's how the it's marked and then draw around it and then sew on the line oh that's again. clever yeah so i've sewn on the line i've sewn in black but it doesn't really stand out yeah. too well and then when you're sewing it it's you could reverse over the joins just because um, just to secure those stitches holding the stripes yeah. together. And did you did you uh, sew them with the seams open or did you just run over them? Um, I did sew them with them open only because I tacked it that way. Um, right. But it, it won't make a difference yeah. if you don't. Okay. I'll tidy all the floor up before I go. You wouldn't have time because Cindy's <laughs> back in after you. <laughs> Sorry, Cindy. And the tail, because it's a bit thicker, it has some stuffing in as well. Oh, OK. I'm just going to use the end of these. Yeah, use your pointer tool, not your scissors at home. So that's the tail. And then baste, so stuff the tail and then baste the end closed and then baste the ends of the legs without stuffing in. Right. Um, ears without stuffing in, although you could put some in if you wanted. Uh -huh. And then arms oh, also. Oh, they haven't got any, oh no. They oh, haven't, it's quite can... a thick fabric, yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. So you do all your um, limbs before you start your main body then? Yeah, because they're done all in the same way. Yeah. I just thought it was easiest to get them out of the way in yeah. one go. Brilliant. It's nice to have a little <laughs> stack of limbs next yeah. to the sewing machine. <laughs> How's your mum? She's good. Yeah, she... Um, She's always out. Always out? <laughs> She's not working anymore? She's still a librarian? No, she has stopped now. Oh. So, uh, yeah. More, more for time to have fun, because her Facebook, she's always out and about, isn't she? She is. She's doing things. Um, yeah, been sort of planning her next. She's making a, I'm not sure whether I'm allowed to say, but she's, um, I've seen a latest sewing project. Okay, good. okay. Um, right, I've got some limbs here. So this is an arm. Stuffed. Stuff it, but don't stuff it too um, firmly at the top because it makes it easier. It's nice on the finished toy that it's a bit floppier, but yeah. also it makes it easier to sew it in. Of course. So that one's done. I've got a couple of legs here that I've basted the ends closed too, so I'll get rid right. of this one. Sorry, I'm just going for some. What's that one there then? What's, What's the one on the table next to the tail here, at the front here? What's that? An arm. This is an arm, right. yes. Yeah, so I'll just give it a quick stuff because I don't okay. know where I've put my other one. I'll just find an did arm. You bring in the a stuff, did you bring another yeah, stuff? I had a one. pair of stuffed arms, but it'll be in the car, won't it? Yeah. Or just sitting next door on the sofa <laughs> yeah, where you probably. were sitting. <laughs> There's a man coming. I don't know who he is. I think he must be here for Hobby Maker, right? And the shirt I had on yesterday, he's got like a short sleeve version of it on. Ooh. Same, same print and everything. I went, I wore that shirt yesterday, went, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have frightened him a bit. I like that one. Thank you. Yeah, this is called Unity. It's all the people of the world, all. This, oh, actually, you'll have seen this one because I wore this my very first John Scott show. Didn't you do my very first John Scott show? Wasn't I wearing this shirt then? Do you remember, remember it in Western Supermare? That John oh, Scott maybe, show? Yeah. That long, that old, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, but I put, I put a shirt on the other day. 
And I remember thinking, oh, I've had this for ages. And then when those Facebook, when those Facebook um, things came up going, you know, six years ago, you were at the wedding and I was wearing the butterfly shirt. And I remember when I got ready for to go to the wedding, I remember thinking, well, this shirt's about four years old. <laughs> So it must be about 10. And then I've got another picture come up this week of me on this morning, um, 15 years ago. And it's, I, wear, I still wear that shirt. <laughs> but then you wear them once in a blue moon, don't you? Charlie Directs came round to my house this week because he, he and his girlfriend are moving in when I go on my holidays and everything. And we went to the, I was showing them around and everything. And I thought, this is my, my shirt, I keep my shirts. And then he went, I thought you were joking that you had 150 shirts because they're just there on a rail, all, un, all un, unpressed. I wash them and just hang them up, you see. How many rails? Two, I've got two for... rails. I've got the, the big eight foot rail, which has got my show shirts on. And then I've got a shorter six foot rail here, which has got my real clothes on that I wear every day. Right. Which is just my jeans and my sh check shirts. I um, went to a wedding recently and I didn't want to buy another pair of shoes. I thought, I've got enough. So <laughs> I wore, and I'd not worn them for about... 18 years for nice shoes yeah, yeah. Um, but the sole just fell off one. oh no <laughs> okay so sometimes it is good to buy new shoes yes exactly <laughs> do you have a spare pair in the car of course oh. flats for oh yeah for dancing later <laughs> yeah. oh after covid i can't wear heels for more than about 45 minutes oh no No, I haven't been dancing for ages. I think the last wedding I went to was um, Vix. I went to Vix's and then two weeks later I went to Cherry's and that was it. I haven't been to a wedding since then, I don't think. I love a wedding. You love a wedding? Oh, um, yeah. I love those two weddings. I had a brilliant time there, but I don't particularly like weddings. Are you not a fan? No. I like styling them. I like being there and dressing the bride and getting all that ready in the morning and everything like that. I get bored. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah was at a wedding this weekend, actually, I think, isn't she? Oh, I meant to ask about Hannah. I've not seen her in ages. Oh, do you know, she's doing her MA, right? Yep. Every exam, she got like top, top, top marks. Wow. Like, two, t like, prop, like, written, not just exams, but all her written work. And she won't mind me saying this, right? All her written work and everything. She got like, what's, is it commend, what's it called when you do better than, so she got an A or 97%, but then it also got commendation or whatever it's called as well for it and everything so she did really well but then yesterday she's she's taken up i don't know what it's to do with her course because she's doing event management she's got involved with this mud soil around birmingham so every now and then it's what oh it's an artist group in birmingham oh i thought it was something to do with the soil what it was made of and everything but anyway, she goes every now and then she goes off digging with these people and she said i texted her last night i said oh, actually, oh, i've had the best day I've had the best day. She's just been digging mud all day and everything. Brilliant. So how oh, distinction. That's the word. What are Ian? Oh, what is he watching upstairs? Distinction. She got a distinction. That's what she got. So you, you I, I think it's so funny because anybody, you, I mean, God love her, I adore Hannah, right? But you first meet her, you'd think, oh dear, where she, where she wandered in from off the street, you know, the thing. And yet she's, and she makes out that she's not, She's not bright or anything, but she's so good. She's she, so yeah. brilliant, yeah. She knows the stuff. She, oh, she, she totally knows the stuff. And now she's got Steph. Steph's moved in, her boyfriend and everything. She's just kind of complete almost. But it's the stories we get, they're so funny. The two of them together at home, they just sound hysterical. It sounds like a, a really weird sitcom. Anyway, <laughs> what are we making now? Right, the face, yes. sort of cheek panel. Right. Has um, a front cheek. How are we doing that? Camera's just coming in now. Um, front, cheek. front cheek, middle cheek, side cheek. Right. Um, so I've, this one's already sewn together. So I'll join this one together. I find there's just to make sure you get the placement. Although it is sort of self-explanatory, really. Um, there's a notch on these two just to make sure they go on the right way. And I find it a little bit easier to sew the white what, with the white one on top. Yeah. And it's called change seam allowance, is it through every? But, yeah. Yeah. So as you're sewing, the fur does get in the way, but just brush the fur sort of under so you can see the cut edge of the fabric. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you could, if you wanted, paste these by hand in place first just to make it a bit easier. Okay. That's one, and then I'll join this 
piece on here. Are there many in baskets, Ben? Oh, right. 24 people need to check out. You 24 people who got it in their baskets, make sure you check out. Whilst you're sewing that, um, I also need to tell you, we also have in stock... Oh, where's they gone? They're over here. We also got in stock, in case you've missed them in the past. We've also got Marcy the marsupial. Oh! They can look... I'll show you them all together in a minute. They look fantastic together. So there's Marcy the marsupial. She's still available. I called him Kevin the koala, but she's called Marcy. Now, the other <laughs> thing is, anatomically... They don't have tails, but ours does. Yes. So I, if you want to make it without the tail, you could do. Yes, in fact, Anne, who has made one, she sent me a picture, she really cleverly sort of, she put the tail in, but yeah. then sort of folded and stitched it down, so it was just like a little, like I think a, she folded it. I was going to say something very rude then, I just about to stop myself. She did a what? She folded it like that. Oh, so I see, just, so it looked like a rabbit. Like yes, a little, so yes, really that's because that's what they've tail. got. That's what they've got. Look, they go like, look, 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 like that. Can you see that? Oh, hang on. There you go. Like that. Anyway, it's Marcy, the koala. And we've also got Chester the lion, which we did for my birthday. He was so popular. Right, let me just take this off a minute. So this is what you get in your kit for Chester the lion. And what's brilliant is, it, look at his mane. His mane is fantastic, look. Because it's not, we made lions before years ago, didn't we? And the, yes. the, the um, mane was just like a bit that stood up like that, wasn't it? Do you remember? And we, we quilted it and zigzagged it. Yes. Yeah, yes. Whereas this, look at that, it's just gorgeous, isn't it? And look at the end of his tail as well. Very, very popular was Chester. Right, now Chester, if you buy Chester, you can then go to Joe's website and you can, there's a section on the website which says free patterns, right? There's a free they're not paper, what they're called, PDF. PDF, PDF pattern for his waistcoat. So if that's what you get in the kit with the badge and everything like that for twenty nine ninety nine, and then if you go to Joe's website, you can get the, the, the waistcoat pattern and make him a little waistcoat. Obviously you don't get the fabric for that, you have to make you supply your own fabric for that. Look. First date, he's going on his first date, going for a job interview, puts his little waistcoat on like that. Beautiful. So that's uh, Chester the Lion. But look at them all together. I think they're just beautiful. On my website, I've got Norman the Cat. Uh, what was the monkey called? Mortimer. Mortimer. And then what's the other one? I've, I've got the pug. I haven't got any of them. I've given them back. I've given them back. I haven't stolen yeah. them. Uh, was it Mortimer? No, no. What was the pug? The, the French dog? Uh, Reginald. Reginald. The Reginald. They, they look gorgeous sitting together at the end of my bed. Look. Look at those three sitting together. They've all got, look at them, they've all got personalities though, haven't they? In real life, I think the lad would have eaten both of those by now. But anyway, let's carry on with that Roddy now. So we've sewn the three parts of the face together. And I've closed the dart in the side of the cheek. That just gives it a little, because they've got quite wide yes. sort of faces. So there's a dart here, so just bring the edges together and sew straight across. Normally I sew from the raw edge to the fold, but actually sometimes with fur you might find it easier to go the other way. <coughs> oh, I think your problems. <coughs> I came over your side of the desk and I've got your, taken an inhale to some of your fluff. So once the sides of the face are done, we can sew it to the middle head. Right. And there are notches. I invert the notches when I cut out the templates and then just leave little pen marks in the seam allowance that I can match thing, you know, match up as I go. Yeah. So I'll sew this side on. Going on your holiday soon. No, we're not going anywhere this summer. No. We've um, got something, we're going away um, to October half term. Oh, okay. 
I have to say, seeing everybody's holiday pictures does make me think, oh, it would be quite nice yeah. to <laughs> go away somewhere. <laughs> Because you've got a holiday soon, haven't you? Yeah, I've got to go to. I've got festival courts this week. Then I've got Quilt Fair in Belfast at the beginning of um, September, and then I go to Catalonia for two weeks. Yeah. Nice. So I stitch this side on, and then do the same. Yeah. With the other, and close the dot in the top. Okay. I have a ready-made face somewhere. <laughs> Just How many of those little bags have you got under there? Well, I did so much prep for this one um, that I've got bags of part heads. Oh. And so I'll move that one. This do one they get done. made or do they just stay in bags at home? It depends how far I get with them. If it's like 20 minutes worth of work, But otherwise, it just goes into the big bag of part made things. Okay. Right, so that's half the face. That's the face. And then next job is to sew the snout right. around the face. And it looks so a bit like of a, a rainbow. It does. It looks like a bit of a scary scene, but actually it's not too bad when you get going. No. Well, they're going in the same direction, the curves. It's not like you're doing uh, uh, opposite curves, are they? They're a little bit opposite here oh, and there. Are they? But um, there are notches that correspond with the middle face seam, uh -huh. so you know whether you're on track yeah. or not. Are you going to Festival Quilts? I'm not. I, I haven't. Do you know, if I'd been thinking, I'd have gone today while yeah. I'm here, but I've got loads of kits to pack up now. Yeah. This <laughs> well, I hope. $29.99 member for Roddy the Red Panda. There's still 25 in baskets, need to check out. Finger. Sorry. Have you found the heat wave? Oh. Um, the, on one of the hottest days, what was I doing? I just remember I was in here a lot, so it was actually quite nice to be in the cold studio. Yeah. But it was really weird what, stepping out, out onto the car park when I went home because it's like getting off, because off, you know it's a slow path, the front door is like getting off an aeroplane. <laughs> oh, we're on holiday. No, John, you're not on holiday, you're just leaving work. You're in Redditch. Not that there's anything wrong with Redditch, but um, I, I kind of was looking forward to it because I thought I'd sit out my garden south facing and it was absolutely boiling, boiling yeah. hot. And also one of my cats, Luther, went for the whole week. He'd gone for a hot, he went to, just, they just disappeared. And I kind of thought, oh, this is it this time. He's ne never come back. And then he just comes wandering in. Like he was, he was very hungry. <laughs> Um, sort of thing. And then the day after, Ghost just did the same thing. Ghost went off for a few days. So apparently they said in the heat wave they go and find a really cool place to sleep and everything. But they're both home again now. So I have to learn this is what, because Norman and Ellie never, they left yeah. the garden for a day and would be back for their tea in the afternoon. These can go for days and days and days. Oh, it's not a nice, um, our, our cat has started staying out overnight, which I don't really like. Oh, no, my love, I can sleep all day on bed inside and go and play all night long. And, I, and, my, and the cat flap is now in the dining room door, not in the back door, so in the, which is underneath my bedroom. So every night, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, and they've come in, they've eaten their food and everything, and then they've gone out to play, had a drink of water and gone out to play again. Yeah, oh, cats caught a bat. Oh, no. Yeah, I just, I still, I don't understand how, because they don't land, well, do they? don't they? land, and also they're like that, yeah. aren't they? But, um... So that's another reason I'd like her to stay in at night. Oh, blind. See, these two I've got haven't brought anything back at all. Them. No, and they're like proper panthers, mine. There was one day I went past and Ghost was in the garden and he was like sort of sitting like this. And I thought, oh, that's cute. He's sitting like that. And then I realised he had some sort of mouse or vole there. But he wasn't killing it. He was just, just... like playing. And then the vole ran off and he'd catch it again and go like this a bit more. And then just let, he just let, let it, watched it and just let it run off. And the same, about the same time, we have jackdaws galore, right? And the jackdaws all came down to feed in the garden. And he was literally sitting in the middle of about 50 jackdaws going like, 
Ooh, what are these? You know, <laughs> oh, these are big. You know, but but it doesn't try and jump on them or attack them or anything. It's really, and I've got a little robin that comes in the garden, and Luther will sit on the ki the, di uh, the dining room table out in the garden, and the robin almost talks to him. He sits on like a little fire. I've got a fire pit thing, and the robin just sits like this, and Luther's just kind of having a conversation. It's the weirdest thing, but no aggression, nothing like that. That's funny. Weird. Yeah. Our cat is not the biggest, but she really is convinced she can take the squirrels on that run oh, along see, the Nelly, fence. But Nelly but used to be like that. Nelly was tiny, but she'd come in with great big fat pigeons. She'd drag, drag a dead pigeon through the cat flap. But these two, huge, never touch them. Don't scratch. They don't scratch you oh. or bite you or anything. They're so placid. Until I go home one day and I'll be mauled by one of them. You watch better. Right, okay, what's next? Right, sewing the nose onto the front of the snout yeah. to make that easier just make little clips in the seam allowance all the way along oh, right. the edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So not quite as deep as the seam allowance yeah but it just helps it sort of flatten out as you sew yeah. because this is quite easy to sew on right and the nose looks a bit weird at this point doesn't the it? nose does look weird but don't worry yeah. that's how it's supposed to be so as I bring the nose round, I'm just going to sort of flatten out the snout to make it a bit easier. Over a third of the stock is gone. Make sure you check out. So that's the nose on. Right. And then the ears, which we made before, cut those out, turn them the right way. Um, and then baste the edge closed uh -huh. and then with the white side against the face yeah. baste them into position where marked so there's an it's in between the seam and there's a notch brilliant while you're uh, are they ready now okay while you're saying that I've got some pictures of the festival today's festival of quilts here we go. Oh, that's Louisa. There's Louise Gold. Look. Oh, hang on. Can I put on the telly, please? There's Louisa at Sew Motion. Oh, look at her lovely stall. And that's her husband there, Justin. He has to, have to take holiday from his proper job to go and help <laughs> her. That's nice. And who, another one? Oh, oh, hang on. I've got a swinging circle. Oh, Jenny Jackson. Jenny Jackson there. Oh. Oh, was that it? It's just the two. Oh, oh, now there's Rebecca Reed interviewing Keith. And there's uh, Alan. Alan's filming while drinking a coffee. Honestly. He's got two cameras, look, one on Rebecca. I wonder if one's on each or one's on both and one's on Keith. Yeah, I think it's one's on both, one's on Kate, and then he'll make Rebecca ask the questions again later. I've worked in professional television, I know how this works. So that's the quilt from yesterday. Look, he's in front of the checkerboard one at the back. It's the one we had yesterday with uh, Victoria Carrington. Gorgeous. Is that it? Is there another one? Oh, one more. Sorry, Joe. Just waiting for it to come up. Computers, oh, computers, oh, it's black screen. Right, we'll carry on, we'll carry on. And when we find the fourth one, we'll show it. Right. Right, so we've got the, fa the whole face is done now. The whole face is done. Pop the eyes in at this point. Yeah. Uh, the back head, this is the way I do it with all my toys. Back head pieces, one on top of the other. And sew from the top along the back, just for a short um, while. Maybe uh -huh. four centimetres or so. Um, just short of two inches. That's... And the more, the smaller the seam is, you don't want it too small so you can't finish it later. But it just means that the head will open up to, when you attach it to the body. Yeah. Have you said what? It's not, you don't go into Birmingham. It's at the NEC, you just go around the N40, around the outside and drop in. Okay. Okay, so the head, the back head has been partially joined. Yeah. And then I'm going to line up that centre seam with the dart at the centre of the face. Right. And then from that point, I'm going to sew one side at a time. Oh, right. Okay, so go from the centre round to the edge, from the centre round to the edge. Yep. Yep.
Ben's been told he can have a free pass to Festival Quilts this afternoon and he's finding any... Re yeah, but they might have all gone for tomorrow because they've only got a certain amount. They've only got a certain...